In this video, we'll go through several worked examples that are related to module two. The first practice problem is related to writing nuclide symbols, which would be for a specific isotope of an element. The problem we're gonna do is to use the appropriate format to rid the symbol for the nuclide having 11 protons and 12 neutrons. So we have 11 protons and 12 neutrons and we need to put everything into this format. In this format, Z is the atomic number, A is the mass number, and X is the chemical symbol. Starting with the atomic number, which is 11, this tells you the number of protons of the nuclide, which goes in the spot for A. It also tells us which element to look up in the periodic table. So it also tells us that the element we're looking for is sodium, which has the symbol capital N lowercase a. To determine the mass number, we add the protons and the neutrons together. So the isotope is sodium, so Na, with a superscript on the left side of 23, which is the mass number, and an 11 as the subscript on the left. Did I say left or right? I think I said right, but I mean left for the 23. Okay, so the think about portion of this, once you've identified the number of protons, which is the atomic number, finding a symbol and identifying the element represents, the element it represents is kind of straightforward because the elements are arranged in order of increasing atomic number. So here's the summary slide. We were given the number of protons and neutrons and asked to come up with the appropriate symbol. This was actually the minimum amount of information that we needed in order to put all of it together. This practice problem is about calculating the average atomic mass and it's a little bit, I don't know, beyond what we maybe did in the lecture because we're gonna do something that has three isotopes. So using the relative abundances and the atomic masses of the following isotopes of neon, we're gonna calculate the average atomic mass. So collect and organize, I mean, everything is kind of in the table already. In order to calculate the average atomic mass, which we're gonna do as a weighted average, we need to know the masses of the individual isotopes and we need to know their percent abundances. And we have all of that here. Okay, I guess we kind of uh, combined everything there. So the only thing that we might change here is that the natural abundances are given as percentages. And depending on how you like to set this up, you're probably gonna convert all of it to a decimal instead. So when we go to do this, um, this is a nice way to have the, the math written out because we have it by isotope. So the top line, that 19.9924, that's the atomic mass of neon 20, and the 90% abundance written as a decimal is 0 0.904838. Then the second line is my neon 21, which has a mass of 20.9940, and it's percent abundance was pretty tiny, so a 0.26%. So converted to a decimal, it's 0 0.002696. And then neon 22 is my third line with the mass of 21.9914 and a 9% abundance. So my decimal here is 0 0.092465. If you multiply those and then add them all up, you get 20.1799 atomic mass units. So now, the, I mean, the question is, does this make sense? So the final answer is between the atomic masses of the individual isotopes. Um, it's closest to neon 20, which had the highest abundance, but because there were two heavier isotopes, that did have a contributing percent natural abundance, it is a little bit heavier. So what you wanna look here is to make sure that it's closest to the one that has the biggest contribution and that 
it is has moved in a direction that makes sense. So if we got something that was a lot bigger, let's say that we got something closer to 22, or we even got something that was 23, or we got something that was less than 19.9, those would be indications that we had a mistake. All right, and here is our summary for this problem. This time we're gonna practice naming ionic compounds and the compound we have to name is FeCl2. And this is a transition metal complex, which I know because Fe is in the transition metal section of the periodic table. In the names of the transition metal complexes, we use Roman numerals to indicate the charge on the transition metal. So we'll name this like a normal ionic compound where we name the cation and then name the anion, but we'll have a Roman numeral after the cation to indicate what the charge is. There are two Cl minus ions for every iron ion in FeCl2. So the charge on the iron must be plus two. We'll express the two plus as the Roman numeral two. So my name is iron with a two in parentheses, followed by the anion, but instead of chlorine, I've got this IDE to indicate that it was a negative ion. And because this is an ionic compound, I don't need any prefixes. I just say iron two chloride, and the two lets me know how many chlorides I would have if I wrote the formula. So that's how you would check your work. So the best way to check your work would be to take the name and turn it back into the formula. And here is our summary for this problem. Let's do a practice that has a polyatomic ion and we're given a name and we're asked to come up with a formula for sodium sulfite. And let's see. It's an ionic complex, and which we know because it has this word that's a polyatomic ion, and we have a metal. And the sulfite is, it's an oxoanion. It's the, the I-T-E in there that gives us a clue. It's I-T-E or A-T-E that gives us a clue that it's going to be one of those polyatomic ions and not just a sulfur, because if it was IDE for sulfide, then it would just be sulfur as an anion. So if we go look up what the formula for sulfite is, it's SO3 two minus, and we need to pair this polyatomic anion with enough sodium cations to fully balance the charges. The normal charge on a sodium ion is a one plus, and it can't have anything other than that. So in order for these charges to balance, we need two sodiums for every one sulfite anion. So our formula would be Na2SO3. If we wanted to check our work, we could take the formula and then translate it back into the chemical name. And here's the summary for this one.